what's up guys we're out here on a steamy hot muggy ass monday afternoon got my pod 300 in today temporary location till i get my uh, little mount and then actually it will be exactly where my phone is and my phone will be down there but for now it's velcroed up in this little location so i can check it out and see how it works <laughs> fool around with the gauge display and uh data login too which will be kind of kind of cool so that little box in the top left corner from this view is my air fuel ratio we got throttle percent reading coolant temperature and engine rpm and i'm gonna start data login by hitting this button recording pulling like a freight train I'm trying to think of another project to get going soon and I used to be really big into turbo cars and I've been kind of thinking about like an Audi A4 or maybe even an Evo but I don't know cars don't really do it for me like motorcycles do not anymore but we'll see I'm going to attempt my first true walkthrough how-to video. I want to get good at doing them. So much things I've already done to the bike and some of the stuff is on YouTube already. Some of the walkthroughs are good, some of them are not so good, but I really want to be able to start doing my own. A couple things I have to get done that I've been putting off is eliminating the oxygen sensor, which I've already disabled it in the Woolwich software. But what you have to understand is in Woolwich, you're not actually telling the ECU to no longer read the oxygen sensor. All you're doing is eliminating the error code from coming up on the dash once you remove it. And I have verified this because with the idle and very low RPM or very low throttle position, the oxygen sensor is still trying to adjust the fuel. I know it is. It's making it run a little rich at idle, which is also what causes that loopiness. And I verified that by watching it. And now that I have my uh, Pod 300 from DinoJet, I can see my air fuel ratio and exactly what's going on. And basically, when you remove your cat and put on an aftermarket exhaust, the fuel changes uh, the back pressure changes and the computer is constantly adding and taking fuel away when the bike is idling and you can watch it because it'll drop down to 12 or so to 1 air fuel ratio and the idle will loop and then it will kind of even out and pick back up and then it will drop again what I did was I went in with the uh, auto tuner and set that to be at 13.5 and when it's at 13.5 and stays at 13.5 it idles perfectly then what happens is the O2 sensor will start to try to correct again and the idle will, will go back. So even with the auto tune in, the oxygen sensor is still in effect. And I do have it disabled in Woolwich, but again, it's only disabling the, the check engine light. So today we're going to eliminate it. Uh, I was just waiting for this bung plug to come in. Uh, so this is what I ended up getting off of Amazon. It's any 12 millimeter O2 sensor bung should work. This is a... 12 by 1.25 millimeter hopefully those threads are the same i believe they are so i'm going to show you what it takes to do that of course i forgot my power drill at the store and i don't feel like running back over there to grab it so we're going to do everything by hand today the body fairing bolt should be four millimeter if i remember correctly yes four millimeter so you got three of these you have to take off we also are going to have to pull the tank up to get to the o2 sensor plug oh and there's also no videos that i could find or even on the forums and stuff i mean i didn't spend a lot of time looking but i could not find anywhere where it explained how to actually remove the o2 sensor from a gen 5 zx 10r i mean it's pretty straightforward you know chase the plug up find it unplug it and remove the sensor and then plug the hole and just so you guys know i'm out here today it's about 95 degrees pretty humid wearing my helmet just so i can take you along for the journey if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet do me a favor and hit that button uh bring a drill with you it makes this much easier <laughs> like i said i'm not in a hurry so plus i can edit all this out like this ready 
boom. When you're taking stuff apart, don't just rush and pull everything off. Really take in where everything goes, what you're doing. You know, I mean, it's pretty easy to start pulling screws off and then end up with a big pile of screws and kind of be like, oh shoot, what went where? One thing I usually do is I'll take a bunch of different medicine cups and if I'm working on different sides of the bike or different areas of the bike, I'll have a medicine cup for each area. So right now I'm only doing this side and plus at this point I've taken these apart so many times I know where everything goes. But if I had to do multiple different things at once, I would have a cup for each section to keep the bolts in. So just a little food for thought, little trick there. All right, now popping these pins off, what I usually do is just use a smaller Allen and you just press on the center. You'll hear it pop, but that'll uh, pop these little guys out of there. And then to reset them, you just push them back out. So basically you're just pushing in that center to release it and then pulling it back out to stick it back in there. So on this center one, you're just going to take a flat head right up underneath there and kind of squeeze that out of there. And then there's one more on the bottom. And I think that should be everything here. I just kind of wiggle that loose, pull her out, put her somewhere safe. And then you got your O2 sensor down here. I'm going to take that off of there. This is the coolant overflow tube. And keep that tucked over there. And we'll just follow this guy up. What I am going to do is pull that sensor off real quick and make sure that this bung fits there. Yes, yeah, 17 for the factory one. Pull this guy out of there. And let's make sure that the bung plug fits. It's got a new crush washer on it. That's cool. And of course that one's an Allen head. Uh, like a glove. Oh, eight millimeter. Perfect. This doesn't need to be super tight. It's got a crush washer on it, so we're just going to give it a good snug until it kind of fights. Now, I believe this goes right behind the air box, so I'm going to pull off the passenger seat, pull off the tail, pull off the seat, pull off the side panel, do the same on the other side, prop up the gas tank, see if we can get our hands in there. You're going to pull off your rear seat. Remove anything that needs to be removed, and I'm going to pop these four screws. Also, all four millimeter. Slide back on the tail fairing, and she comes right up. Then you're going to have two 10 millimeters to remove the rear seat. I have been using the Saddleman seat, which is absolutely wonderful compared to the factory seat. However, it is much heavier. Back and up here's my little harness that i constructed for the power commander this side is the auto tune cable everything else is routed up this way you're gonna have two four millimeter bolts here and two up under here to remove the side panels these ones are shorter than all the rest so it's one good way to remember them and then the two at the front are much different because they're much longer you see they're much bigger in general so can't really confuse those plus they have a much thicker uh, nylon washer on them removing these side panels is somewhat scary but what I found to work the best is if you come from the back undo that velcro give it a little push forward unclip it at the front and then kind of pull from the middle she'll pop right out Velcro, front, under the middle part, pull it back. Then we'll go ahead and do the 8mm bolts to remove the tank. This piece, once the two bolts are removed, we'll pull right up off of there. And then we'll be able to prop the tank up. So I'll be back with you when we get under the tank. guys so it's this top plug on my bike it's the top plug right by the airbox here so we're just gonna undo this guy and what I'm 
gonna do is cap that plug that's exposed with some electrical tape. Just try to keep some water from getting in there and stuff. So she's capped off with some electrical tape. What I'm gonna do in the future, I have to get back in here once my Sprint air filter arrives. So once I take the tank off completely, I'm gonna take this plug, undo it from there, and most likely zip tie it up out of the way somewhere, just cause it doesn't need to be there anymore now. And this is my pod 300 wire here. So again, I kind of just put it in there because it's not exactly where it's going to be mounted yet. I didn't want to go up over here because then the throttle cable is right here and you don't want that rubbing against it or anything. So I used this bracket right behind the airbox to keep it up over here. And that'll also make sure that when the tank is lowered, it's not rubbing on that wire. Once everything is mounted where it's going to be permanently, I will come back in here and uh, fix this up a little bit better. I mean, for the most part, it's, it is where it's going to be. You never really want any cables hanging anywhere on your bike. Everything should be neatly zip tied and put away. All right, so she is back together. And I don't know if it's just me, but it already sounds like uh, the idle is a bit different. Right now it's reading about 13 to one, 13 to, you know, with the oxygen sensor in there, it would, uh, it would dip well below 12.5 quite often. So it's not warmed up yet, but. So once my bracket gets here, the uh, pod 300 will mount right here where the phone is instead of being velcroed down here where I have to look down to see it but oh wow can actually give it part throttle in a higher gear at low rpms that's awesome That's so smooth. I mean, I thought the idle was getting better before. You can really tell when you're getting back on the throttle from a higher gear, like right now in fourth, before you get on and it would just stumble. Now it's just smooth as butter. If you're wondering what that light, that little LED that's coming on, I have it set to come on if it goes above 14.7 and if it goes below 11. And that's just so that when I'm doing a pull, uh, that light will come on and warn me if I'm too rich or too lean once it's mounted properly and I can actually see it. Because obviously I'm not going to be looking down while I'm doing a wide open throttle pull. So that is how you remove the oxygen sensor in a Gen 5 CX-10R. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button. Until the next video, stay safe.